Hello! In this video we are going to explore the arpeggiator page of our randomizer series libraries. For this purpose we are going to use Vesper, but all the other libraries in this series will work exactly the same way. To access the arpeggiator page, we click on this edit button over here. Now, in this moment, the arpeggiator is not active. We can switch it on by clicking on this button over here. Or, whenever we are in a different page, we can click on this button over here. Now, let's go back to the arpeggiator page. We have uh, different parameters, buttons and knobs. This menu over here will define the mode. At the moment we are in active mode, it means the arpeggiator is on but we can also go to hold. This way the arpeggiator will be active even if I release my hands from the keyboard. If you look at the keyboard at the bottom of the GUI, you see when I'm actually pressing the keys, then I release them straight away. Then I can just switch it off like this. Over here, we have the range options menu. When we are in full range mode, the arpeggiator will work from C1 till C6. When I am on below split, the arpeggiator will only work below the split point. We can define the split point by clicking on this button over here. Then we just press a key on our keyboard. And that will be the key that will define the split between my two keyboard areas. So below the split point, now I have the arpeggiator working. Above it, the arpeggiator is not working. Similarly, I can have the arpeggiator working only above the split point. And below it's not going to work anymore. For the time being, I'm going to work in full range mode. Over here we have five knobs. The first one will allow us to decide the rate or the speed of the arpeggiator. So if I put it to 16, for example, it will be 16th notes much faster. The duration is a quite an interesting knob. When we are using just simply the arpeggiator, the duration knob will actually allow us to decide the length of each note. If our patch has a fairly short release time, then we will be able to notice the difference more. Then we have the swing. Then we have the octave. If I slow down the arpeggiator, you will understand better what's actually happening. And then the repeats. So basically, I can repeat two, three, four times until up to five times each note of the arpeggiation. Below the knobs, we have this table, which is the velocity table. I can have up to 32 steps. Speed this up a bit. You can really hear the difference between the high velocity and the soft velocity notes. We can decide the number of steps as we have already seen with these buttons here. Or we can also do it with this value edit over here. And then we have the order options menu. There are quite a few options available.
Now we have one more option, which is the chord option. Now we can also do this with the step sequencer, but the sound is quite different. So you can choose a method that uh, suits better your composition. If I do the same thing with the sequencer, it will sound like that. With the arpeggiator, it sounds like that. Also because we can decide the length of each note. And also we can play around with the octaves. So I'm just doing a uh, C and G here. And maybe we can play around with the repeats. Now, one thing that is really cool in this uh, Vesper library is that, that we can use the arpeggiator together with the sequencer. Now, in order to do that, the arpeggiator needs to be the application that triggers the notes of the sequencer. So, in other words, we have to think of a chain in which the arpeggiator comes first and the sequencer comes afterwards. To set it up, we have to use a fairly slow arpeggiator time. So maybe half of a bar. And let's put it on up for the moment. So I have C, G, C, G going on. If I switch on the sequencer at this point, you see that the sequence will be triggered first starting from the C note and then from the G note. The actual sequence melody is like this. It's like I was just bouncing from the C and the G with my fingers. But I'm not actually doing that, I'm just playing C and G at the same time with arpeggiator on. And the arpeggiator is doing that because it's interacting with the sequencer. If I was to adjust the octaves and put like one octave more, it will bounce between C2 and G2 and C3 and G3. And also I can experiment with different uh, order modes. And if I have maybe more nodes, Now, the duration here is going to affect the number of the sequencer notes that are going to be played. So, if I put it around this, you see 50%, it plays just 50% of the sequence. If I put this one to a quarter note, Duration, let's put it back to more or less 1%. And let's put this one back to up. You see that since now the arpeggiator is faster, it is not able to trigger the full sequence. So it just triggers half of it. But if I put the rate of the sequence double speed, so 30 seconds, I can again hear the full sequence. And maybe I can just uh, do 50%. Okay, let's uh, maybe put back the octaves and let's change the repeats.
Let's add maybe a little bit of echo. And also let's adjust the release time. So you can achieve some uh, different effects by combining the arpeggiator and the step sequencer together. You can also use the chord mode. So that's all for this video. Please watch all the other videos to learn about all the other features. Thanks for watching. Bye.